Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is the recovery of an outdoor condensing unit with no manifold gauge set. So we're using the Fieldpiece MR45. It has a digital pressure display for the input and the output. So here's the input, here's the output, and what we have is three valve core removal tools. So we got one here, which is acting like a T, and then we have one on the vapor line and one on the liquid line. So we have the valve cores out over there already. We have a short hose attaching from the out put on the uh, self-contained recovery unit to the vapor side of the tank where the outdoor unit is off and we're pulling vapor and liquid uh, at the same time out of the system. Basically it's that saturated state uh, because the system is off and equalized. So I'll show you what it looks like right over at the service valves. So here you have the two valve core removal tools. We've removed the valve cores out and we're holding the pressure back with these two valves right here. The Appion valve core removal tools are rated down to 20 microns of a vacuum level, so they're, they're very good at doing the job of recovery or vacuums. The two things that we need to do first is one, make sure that we don't overfill the recovery tank, so we got to weigh the recovery tank. And the second thing we need to do is purge the air out of the lines before we go ahead and recover. So we've got our scale right here, and it says zero pounds, zero ounces. We're going to go ahead and set the refrigerant tank on the scale. And you see that it reads 30 pounds, 15 ounces. On the tank right here, it says the TW, right here it says TW 27.5 pounds. So that's the empty tear weight of the tank. This is a 50 pound tank and you can fill it up to 80% capacity. So 80% of 50 pounds is 40 pounds. So just to make sure that we don't go over that, well, we're going to stick around 38 pounds total worth of refrigerant that we can put in this bottle. And in reference to the tear weight, we just add that. So 38 pounds plus 27.5 is 65.5 pounds total. You see our scale reads 30 pounds, uh, roughly 15 ounces. So we can put in another almost 35 pounds. So a little bit less than 35 pounds uh, worth of refrigerant. This system right here is only going to have probably around 5 pounds or so, but we'll go ahead and monitor it as we uh, recover the refrigerant. Now if you can see we have this line coming from the vapor and this line coming from the liquid off of the, the outdoor condenser. It's getting teed together, it's going through the filter dryer and then it's coming through over to the recovery tank. So this is where we're going to purge the air out of the lines at. So we're going to turn the valves on the valve cores on and then we're going to purge the air out right here. The recovery machine will allow the refrigerant to come through and go to the bottle. All right, without the recovery unit being on. So now we're going to go ahead and purge the air out of the lines. We want to make sure that all the air is out and it's just refrigerant coming through because we do not want to contaminate the recovery tank. So that should be good right about there. So it is hard to tell when you get all the air out of the lines because in saturated state, you're not going to see the liquid evaporating in the air. So you, you won't be able to tell. You might hear a little noise change and that's about it and sometimes you really don't hear much of a noise change. Now we're going to turn the recovery bottle on. We're opening the handle counterclockwise. Now just go ahead and turn this on. You can see the pressure going down on the inside and it's going up on the outside and also you see that our weight inside the recovery cylinder is going up. Now this recovery machine will automatically turn off once it gets down to 10 inch HG but what we're going to do is we're going to stop it before it gets down there because there is a leak in this refrigerant system. So we don't want to end up putting air in the tank so we're just going to go right below zero PSIG and that's going to be about it. So we don't want to go to 10 inch HG, but we will go to maybe 1 inch HG. We don't want to go any lower really than right around 0 PSIG, just to make sure that no air goes in that recovery tank. What's nice about just having the three hoses and the field piece MR45 is just there's less chance for leaks going through the recovery manifold. You know, you have less hoses, less restrictions, and you can recover faster. The only thing I could do to make this even faster of a recovery is to increase the size of my two lines coming in, or maybe my, my output line right here. I, 
I could end up having the uh, the two lines being 3 8 you know with quarter inch fittings on them but as you can see the recovery does not take very long at all this is a small 10 sear unit so there really isn't a whole lot of refrigerant in this system and there was a refrigerant leak so it may have leaked maybe half the refrigerant out of the system so there really wasn't much to even put in here Our handles on recovery right now. Uh, once I turn this off, I'm going to switch it to the purge, and it's going to purge the refrigerant out of the uh, coil that's inside of this uh, recovery unit. I'm going to go ahead and shut this off now. You can see that we're at zero psig. We're going to wait and just see if that rises now. I want to make sure that I'm not pulling any air through the leak on the system. If the pressure does increase, I'll just go ahead and turn the recovery machine on again. Uh, I will tell you that if there is no leak on a air conditioning system and, and you let the MR45 go down to 10 inch HG, and you did take the valve cores out at the system, you're not going to have to turn the recovery machine on a second time. So what I've done is I've waited about 7 minutes and we have about 13 PSIG that has uh, now flashed from a liquid into a vapor and exerted pressure in the system. The reason for this is I didn't pull it down into a vacuum like I normally would uh, because this system has leaks. I don't want to pull air through the leak in their system into the refrigerant tubing through the recovery machine and into my recovery tank so that's why I just shut it off at zero let the pressure rise I'll turn it on again and here we go So that much amounted to about 1.3 ounces of refrigerant uh, from when it was at, say, 13 or 14 PSIG until now when it's at zero. I'll let this sit again, and uh, it shouldn't rise this time. It should stay at about zero PSIG. And it is very important to have the fan running on the inside. That's going to put heat on the uh, coil on the inside there, basically a heat load. So that will increase the pressure on the low side of the system, making it easier for you to recover it out of the ports and put it into the tank. You can see it's starting to get dark out here, uh, but basically what we're going to do now, we're at zero PSIG, I waited another few minutes, I'm going to go ahead and turn this to the purge on the top right here, and we're going to turn the on button on again. This time we'll let the recovery machine shut off by itself. So that's how you do it. If you're looking for the tools and supplies used in this video, I have them all linked down in the comment and description section below. And if you want to support this HVACR training channel, check out patreon.com slash Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AEC Service Tech Channel.